Hello everyone, I'm Admin George from Pageant Empress, and in this video, we're going to discuss about Miss Universe Puerto Rico, Ashley Carina, her journey towards Miss Universe 2022. To understand a little bit more about Miss Universe Puerto Rico, Ashley, I have invited my friend Oscar from Puerto Rico. Hola, Oscar. Thank you so much for being here. Hola, Oscar. <laughs> I hope I did it right. <laughs> Hi, George. No, it's okay. It's it's basically like Spanish. It's just Bellezas Boricuas, which means Puerto Rican beauties. My first question for you, Oscar, is tell us a little bit more about Miss Universe Puerto Rico, Ashley Carino, and tell us a little bit more about her background. So Ashley is a girl that has been studying aerospace and engineering ever since she was a little girl in love with space. She would look at the stars and just say, like, I want to be an astronaut. That was the first thing that she said that she wanted to be when she was a child. Um, and she also used to say when she was a kid that she wanted to be the first Miss Universe in space. It's amazing how like her dream could maybe come true. I think that Ashley is a very strong candidate. Even though she does have some pageant experience, it's not like Madison Anderson, Miss Puerto Rico 2019, who had experience from when she was a child. She competed at Miss Florida 2021 with her sister. And you know how Puerto Ricans have like 20 last names. So, so they wouldn't get confused because they're both Ashley Cariño. So one of them was Ashley Cariño and the other one was Ashley Barreto. She ended up winning that pageant. She didn't plan on winning the pageant, but then she went to Miss USA in 2019 in 2021 and she ended up second runner up a very good way of telling the potential of a candidate because we all know how competitive miss usa is her getting to a second place or a third place technically second runner up was a really big deal and and showing the potential especially for a girl that's not a pageant like she she just started like a year and a half ago she's so intelligent as it is so difficult to study about the outer space and her future goal is to work with the nasa I remember Miss Universe Ireland 2019. She also used to work with NASA as a regional director of NASA's Space App Challenge in Washington, D.C. And I found it really fascinating as I personally, myself, I love looking up at night at the sky and just imagine what's outside going on outside the planet Earth. I always imagine, I'm pretty sure it's not just us, right? I'm sure there's an outer space in the galaxy, in the universe. So I just found that really interesting and fascinating that she's studying about the outer space, especially that she wants to work with NASA. So I think that's a great, great background. Can we talk about a pageant experience as she was crowned as Miss Florida USA and she placed second runner up at Miss USA 2021? Get some experience and see how it goes. And that's why she didn't think, she's like, I didn't think I was going to win Miss Florida. Um, but she basically wanted to take those experiences to see it. So then later on, compete at Miss Universe Puerto Rico. She was worried about her Spanish speaking skills. Um, but honestly, she's great in Spanish, like super impressed. Um, I do like her performance at Miss USA, but I do feel like she was holding back a bit. And I think that that was just like the process of her like being comfortable in her own skin. And I feel like at Miss Universe Puerto Rico, she just like guns blazing, just just all out incredible performance at Miss Puerto Rico. I thought she looked absolutely beautiful in her golden gown that she wore during Miss USA. And I thought she looked absolutely stunning in the performance that she gave. I thought everything was quite well. Um, I would say that she needed a little bit more energy. I think energy-wise, she was not there completely. I feel like she was just about 80% there, but I'm really happy to see her evolve so much as she has improved within a year, right? From Miss USA to Miss Puerto Rico, it's like less than a year. And I'm so happy to see she has changed. She has evolved and transformed into this beautiful beauty queen and now watching her national passion yesterday to just be ready mentally for this video i was impressed by seeing ashley's performing at the miss universe puerto rico it felt like she was competing at the international pageant of miss universe it was that good she has great stage presence and i'm excited to see what she's going to bring at the miss universe well, i think that it comes with the fact that she's not a pageant girl you know she wasn't really a pageant girl before 2021 so um, I feel like, like I said, and even though I think, I mean, every girl, even with experience, you have kind of like those moments of self-doubt. Maybe it's just because she sees it so competitive and she used to be very self-conscious about the fact that she's really tall and she's very thin, naturally thin. You know, she doesn't diet or anything. She's just thin. Um, so she used to be really self-conscious about her body. Um, so I feel like maybe 
it kind of held her back. While doing my research about Ashley for this discussion, I found that she has received a certification to work as a physiosocial rehabilitator as specializing in working with children with cognitive diversity. I found that really inspiring because she herself has ADHD and she wants to help other children who are also going through similar experience as she is going through. So I think that's really wonderful because nowadays being a Miss University is much more than just being a beautiful face and having a social advocacy that is relevant and related to her personal background, I think it makes much more sense. And I'm so happy that she's there out there to help help other children with ADHD so they could feel more uplifted. I think she said that she started that during the pandemic in 2020. Um, but basically, one of the things that she helped these kids uh, and how she realized she wanted to go to Miss Universe Puerto Rico was uh, one of the things that she did with the kids was basically write out on a piece of paper the dreams that you feel like they're unattainable, but you would like to achieve in your lifetime. She always did this with the kids, um, not her, but their dreams and goals. And one day, a little girl that she was helping asked her to do it as well with her. And then when she was basically filling out what she wanted to do, her main thing was to represent Puerto Rico at Miss Universe. And she said that that was a moment she realized that she was really holding herself back and that she was the one that had to, you know, make the choice um, of, of competing at Miss Puerto Rico. Um, and just give herself that opportunity. Um, but yeah, she's been doing it. Um, it's amazing. I think that she has an incredible uh, portfolio background with uh, not only her studies, her professional life, but just like also like social work as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I believe that one of the things that she was uh, basically helping kids um, through science. So you know how there's people that help them through art, music, etc. Well, she uses science because she loves science so much. What is the biggest strength of Ashley and what can we expect to see from Puerto Rico in Miss Universe? Ashley is a very, like, she's very centered. She's very focused. She doesn't let things distract her, um, even if she knows that they're difficult. And I think that that's, um, that's one of her biggest strengths and just how mature she is and how she handles things. I told her when I interviewed her, I, I feel like you're very calm, very at peace all the time. Um, and you can tell just in the way that she speaks, you know, just her voice, her tone of voice is so soothing. I feel like if she takes what she did at the finals at Miss Puerto Rico to Miss Universe, uh, I think that that could be a winning performance. I think that they need to be careful with the gown. I think that the gown needs to be something like they don't have to reinvent the wheel. They don't have to do anything. They just need to do something that's beautiful, that is cinched to her body and just go like that. Just just do something similar to the finals and that's it. While watching the national pageant, I noticed that all the girls in the top five finalists in Miss Universe Puerto Rico wore white gowns. I do not know if that was on purpose or if it's just a coincidence, but I would like to see Ashley wearing bright, vibrant colors with more saturation in her evening gown at the Miss Universe as it will enhance her tan brown skin as she will stand out at the Miss Universe stage. The last two years, I had Puerto Rico in my top five finalists. I have updated my Miss Universe top five list. So I now have Ashley in my top five at Miss Universe prediction after she won the Miss Universe Puerto Rico crown. I agree with um, Ashley. I think that her styling needs to be at Miss Universe. It needs to be what it is now. Her hair, her makeup, it needs to be what it is now at Miss Universe. Ashley is one of those candidates that she doesn't like she's already naturally beautiful she doesn't have any surgeries in her face she is naturally gorgeous so i feel like she needs to go to miss universe exactly the way she is they just need to work on a couple of things like the evening gowns and her outfits and stuff i think that they're doing fine right now um but yes you're right i would love to see her with some color i think that's something like i can imagine her with a suleika style dress but like just like red like just something just to pop out or even just yellow like not like a toned down yellow. I want to see yellow. Vibrant. Just, like yeah. Yellow. Yeah. <laughs> and another, another thing that I would like to see at Miss Universe, and, you know, it's just like I'm kind of over, it's like I was kind of disappointed with the gowns at Miss Puerto Rico, to be honest with you, because they all look the same. Do you guys remember Estefania's green dress? That gown sparkled because of the material, but it had no kind of, like, you know, rocks on it. Yeah, it was nothing. It was just the fabric, and it was gorgeous. Like, I can imagine Ashley in a gown like that, but in yellow, where she gives me a twirl like that. I think I would die. <laughs> I would die. 
I just, I think yellow is my favorite color. And I think that she's just like such a spectacular morena. I think that she could totally, totally um, just take like a vibrant color to Miss Universe and just be remembered, you know. If you're going to have a different gown for the preliminary and the final, make sure that both gowns are spectacular. Please. And if you're going to use one gown, make sure that it's like a knockout. Do not use an okay gown for the preliminary and one that's spectacular for Miss Universe finals because we may not even see it. How are the preparations going for Miss Universe 2022? I'm also friends with uh, the person that um, prepared her, her, her promoter, basically. Um, same person that promoted Michelle Marie Colon. He also uh, helped uh, Cynthia Lavarria, Miss Puerto Rico 2005. Uh, Miss Puerto Rico 2009, 2010. So he 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 has a lot of beauty queens that are, you know, very iconic. Um, and I've been telling him, I'm like, you know, please just be careful with the dress. And, and I think that if it's in January, it'll be fine. She has plenty of time. I, she just needs to maintain what she has and improve on what she has. But she doesn't have, like, a long way to go. Uh, just keep working on runway. Just keep working on, like, what the final look is. She knows how to do her makeup. and She knows how to do her hair because she does it herself at the pageants. Yeah. I think she's I think she's just focused. She's just doing a lot of media stuff right now because it's the first couple of weeks. And then they're just going to laser focus on on everything else she needs. So, they're you know, they do the aesthetic thing. Or... Every year, Oscar, you know this. I always love Miss Puerto Rico in every international pageant. And you guys know how to train your beauty queens. For a small island nation like Puerto Rico, you have five Miss Universe winners, two Miss World, two Miss International. And the very first ever Miss Grand International 2013 is also from Puerto Rico, Jen Lee. So I'm so excited to see what Puerto Rico is going to bring at the Miss Universe and Miss Grand International. Whoever wins has to be the best viable option for whatever the pageant is. Um, and, you know, it's not always a hit. Sometimes it's a miss, unfortunately. Like for Miss Super National 2022, uh, we didn't even place uh, at Miss Supernational, which Puerto Rico normally does. Um, I don't think that she was best suited for that pageant. I do think that whenever we do make the choice, we make the right choice because at least we get into a placement, we get to top 10, top 5. Um, honestly, I think Viviani last year at Miss Grand International, I thought she was, to me, she gave the performance of a winner. Send the girl that's best suited for the pageant. Like, kind of like let the national pageant aside and think of like who is going to possibly win at this international pageant. What do you think of Miss Universe Puerto Rico pageant as an organization after Miss Universe 2001 Denise took over as the national director in 2018? She was the one that put the pageant back into the right track because ever since she took over it in 2018, we've been classifying. Organization this year is really lucky that we got such a spectacular candidate like Ashley that went to Miss Universe Puerto Rico to participate, a spectacular girl to work with towards the, the crown. But doing a good job at diversity, I think it's about time. Um, Puerto Rico is an Afro-Caribbean island so, so the fact that we've only really had three candidates that are considered like that would be considered as a, as a black queen is kind of unfortunate um i think that for a while we were sending kind of like the same prototype at miss universe um before denise uh, came in and it wasn't working you know it wasn't working and thank god she came and saved the day because uh, for the last four years so we've this is four years in a row. We've actually classified at Miss Universe it's the first time. So with Michelle, last year was the first time we had four consecutive classifications. And I, I really believe that this year was going to be the fifth. Let's talk about the gorgeous Miss Grand Puerto Rico 2022, Oksana Rivera. I was watching her Instagram live with Miss Universe 2005, Natalie Gelbova. And they were connecting with each other because they share similar backgrounds since they both were born in Russia and move abroad or settle abroad. And I'm impressed with Oksana's communication skills, especially in English. Do you think she'll be able to win the second golden crown for Puerto Rico at Miss Grand International? I think she has a lot of potential. I, I really do think she's a top five minimum. That's just my opinion. I think that Oksana is an absolutely spectacular candidate. I also had the opportunity to interview her as well for the Miss Universe Puerto Rico 2021 pageant. She's another girl that doesn't really have experience with pageantry. So in the last year, she's done an incredible job at uh, preparing herself for that. She has a golden opportunity with uh, with a speech. She falls under a lot of different things that maybe Nawat would like. So she's technically, you know, she wasn't born in Puerto Rico. She's technically European. 
but she is representing Puerto Rico. So she kind of like hits two birds with one stone. So if he wants to crown somebody that is European, but you know, you know, Puerto Rico fits the bill perfectly because she represents both her background and her heritage as well as the island that gave her a second opportunity. And I think that would be amazing. I think that that's, that's one of her strongest suit. I feel like just the fact that she's so diverse um, and the fact that she, even though she fully embraces you know, Puerto Rico, she also still celebrates her background and her family, her, her adopted parents, you know, they're Puerto Rican and they used to have uh, Russian Christmases uh, in Puerto Rico. And there's a Russian community in Puerto Rico um, that, you know, that they celebrated together these different, you know, Russian cultures. So I think that the complete package and I'm really, really happy for her. Uh, Oksana's an angel. Absolutely. Oksana's an angel. She's such a sweetheart. And she's totally, totally deserving of the crown that she has. So I'm really happy that she's, you know, she gave herself the opportunity and she won the pageant that she wanted to go to. She could be the next Miss Grand International, I think. I'm happy to see her post on Instagram where she's able to consistently post about her love for Miss Grand International. I can see she's learning about the Thai culture and the language, as well as about the Indonesian culture as this year's the host country for the 10th anniversary of Miss Grand International is Indonesia. I can see on social media that a lot of Thai fans are in love with Oksana's beauty and her presence. So I'm really excited to see Oksana hopefully win the second Golden Crown. Do you have any message that you would like to give to your beauty queens, Ashley and Oksana? I would like to say to both Oksana and Ashley is like, no matter what happens, we're already proud of you both. Um, it's incredible how much you guys are giving to Puerto Rico already. Like we are already dreaming with both crowns, um, possible the sixth crown for Puerto Rico for Miss Universe and possibly the first time a country wins two crowns for Miss Grand International. Um, I'm just really happy that you guys are living your dream, that you're representing the the things that you want to represent with a lot of love and passion. I'm just grateful to to be that tiny, even if it's up, I'm a tiny little speck of sand in your path towards the crowns or you know this this pageant world. I'm I'm happy and proud of it. I'm I'm very proud of both of them. Uh, both of them are super sweet girls with incredible backgrounds, um, completely different. Uh, both of them are opposite ends, but. Both of them uh, representing uh, a very unique and diverse Puerto Rican beauty. You run a pageant page and I'm also a pageant commentator. Every year we see so many passionate pageant fans support their own queens, but we also see some pageant fans pulling other delegates down. What are your thoughts on online bullying of delegates as well as the international queens? I always say that a lot of these people that are saying these horrible things about the national girls or the international winners, it's just a reflection of their unhappiness. You know, what whatever they have inside is what they're putting on social media. And it's just like, what are you going to gain? What are you gaining by insulting somebody? What are you gaining by saying something horrible about whatever queen it is? Like... The whole point, like a lot of times, um, you know, fans ruin the things that they love. Yeah. Um, if you love pageants so much, if you love these girls so much, if you're going to say something terrible, don't say it. Just go to your, go to the girl that you like and give them a compliment. Don't go to the girl that you don't like and say you're ugly, you're whatever. Like, no, just go to the girl that you support and just be like, you're the most amazing queen in the world. And like, that would resolve everything. Yeah. That would just that thought would resolve everything, and I think it's you know it should be it shouldn't be done. I feel so bad for Harnas because I know that she's had a lot of online bullying, um, and just just girls in general. I mean, you know, we as as admins of our pages, we can we see the comments, yeah. we see what people say every day, and I'm one of those people that anything that's negative or whatever, block, block, delete. I believe in constructive criticism. So if you have something that could possibly help the candidate. And you say it in a respectful way, I think that's fine. But if you're going to just go on the page and be like, oh my God, you're so ugly, you're so fat, you're so this or whatever, like that is not, no. Like go and be constructive, be like, I would like to see a, a gown of this color. I don't, you know, they can say, I don't like your gown, whatever, change it, that's fine. But don't go in saying mean things because at the end of the day, they're human beings just like us. And even though, like, imagine, like, you getting an insult like that and then, like, multiply that by, like, a thousand percent that these girls see. It affects your mental health. Yeah. Um, so I feel like it's really important to just make sure that before you type something in and you hit post, 
you think about what you're typing and would you like to receive this? Would you be okay if your sister or your mother or your aunt or your cousin would be getting this kind of message? Think about that before you hit post. Let's direct our 100% of our energy towards this delegate to encourage her and support her towards her journey towards any international pageant, whether it's Miss Universe or Miss Grand International. And let's stop wasting our energy towards just being negative because that will just go to nothing. That's just wasting our time. So let's be more wise. Let's be more mindful of our action, especially on social media. Because Miss Universe organization are watching our actions that we are doing on social media. And the recent video that Madam Paula, that she invited Miss Philippines in Indonesia, that they talked about the hashtag kindness campaign, where they talked about the importance of being kind to each other on social media and stop spreading online bullying or hatred towards any beauty queen. So it's about time that we get united. We as pageant fans, we are the representative of our country. So how we present ourselves on social media, it is equally as important as the beauty queens, how they perform on the international platform. So my advice would be let's be kind to one another. Do you have any message that you like to give to our viewers, especially from Latin America like Puerto Rico? I want to give you thanks for the invitation. Uh, as always, I had a great time. Um, and yeah, I, I want to thank um, just people in general, because even though there have been a lot of negativity, I've seen a lot of support for um, at least Puerto Rican candidates on my page. Um, that's what I most mostly focus on. So I, I also have to say, like, I'm really grateful to Thai fans, because I feel like Thai fans tend to love Puerto Rican queens a lot. So I'm really grateful for you guys, because like, it's just like with Viviani, with Stefania, with like with M Madison, like it's crazy how much love um, you know Puerto Rico gets from Thailand. So thank you very much for that. Um, and yeah, I, I have to say before I can't like leave before saying that Thailand has an incredible candidate this year for Miss Universe. I think she's uh, absolutely stunning. I love her. Like I think that she is the the queen from asia to beat honestly um at this point uh, i just i think she needs to stay as she is right now for miss universe and knock it out of the park but I, I love her but yeah thank you thank you for the support in the end oscar where can our viewers watching this video find you on social media a youtube and an instagram page um you may want to i don't know if you could put it on the bottom or something but it's, it's on the screen yeah at bellezas boricuas and uh george will like put it on the bottom so that you guys can go ahead and follow me and i don't know support the girls uh that's the whole point of these pages honestly is like give our opinions be supportive and then just give our support to the girls because they totally deserve it like these girls are competing to represent their countries in the best possible way um the least that they deserve or the least they deserve is our love and respect Yes, make sure to follow him on his social media and subscribe to his YouTube channel as he is very regularly posting actively about the Puerto Rican beauty queens on his YouTube channel and his Instagram page. So make sure to follow him there. If you enjoyed our discussion about Miss Universe Puerto Rico as well as the other beauty queens from Puerto Rico, make sure to click the like button, share this video with your friends and family. Click the red subscribe button to see more videos like this. You can become a part of the Pageant Empress family by joining us on social media at the red Pageant Empress to get the latest pageant news and updates. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope to see you guys once again in my next video. Bye from admin George. Bye bye.